November 26, 2014. A plot of federal land in the Midwestern United States appears to be completely uninhabited. But to those in the know, this is actually the location of Biological Research Area 12, a large SCP Foundation facility that houses and experiments on live biological entities and hazardous tissue samples. Already, it was proving to be a challenging day for the personnel stationed at Area 12, due to what seemed like a freak technical glitch. They were dealing with a system failure and a large-scale containment breach. The deadly bladed petals of SCP-143 were drifting through the air. The acidic SCP-153 roundworms were breeding. SCP-811 was running wild, and a number of amnesia-inducing SCP-939 creatures had escaped their pen. In short, it was a total disaster. Complete paranormal pandemonium. And things were about to get so much worse as the sounds of whirring helicopter blades and the rumbling engines of heavy military vehicles approached. The embattled staff were relieved that mobile task force reinforcements were arriving so quickly. After all, Area 12 was relatively isolated, and they'd only just put in a call for help. On-site security staff were being overwhelmed in the chaos of the containment breach, and they needed the big guns if they wanted to get things under control before it was too late. What they didn't know as the vehicles surrounded their facilities is that it was already far too late for most of them. Soon, heavily armed troops and protective tactical gear were storming the facility. As they entered, terrified staff members ran towards them for protection and then stopped in their tracks. These soldiers didn't bear the insignia of the SCP Foundation or any known mobile task force, nor did they bear the symbols of the Global Occult Coalition. This was something different altogether. Some of the Foundation personnel began to beg for assistance anyway, seeing it as an any port in the storm situation. They realized too late that this group wasn't here to save them, and met their end in a hail of bullets from the soldiers' assault rifles. When the actual mobile task force finally did arrive, they witnessed a horrifying sight. Most of the on-site Foundation personnel had been shot dead, and there were no trace of the culprits. Even worse, several of the SCP-939 creatures were missing, these are the predatory pack-hunting creatures that produce amnestic chemicals to lure and disorient their prey. These anomalies are dangerous enough on their own, but in the hands of someone who really knew how to use them, these living amnestic factories could pose an extremely serious threat. The Mobile Task Force members knew what they were dealing with here. Only one group would have the nerve to perform a high-casualty heist on an SCP Foundation oh. facility during a containment breach. The Chaos Insurgency. The Mobile Task Force reported the incident back to command and already knew what their next mission would be. Track down the insurgency splinter cell and get the 939s back. This mission would have the absolute highest stakes, and if they weren't successful, there was no limit to the damage the Chaos Insurgency could do with a creature as dangerous as SCP-939 under their control. But who exactly are the Chaos Insurgency? What do they want? And why are they stealing anomalies? The Chaos Insurgency is one of the most mysterious and clandestine of the groups that fight against the SCP Foundation. They are different from the Global Occult Coalition, a United Nations offshoot created after the Seventh Occult War, whose mission is to destroy rather than try to contain anomalies. The Serpent's Hand is on the opposite end of the spectrum. This group strives for the normalization of the anomalous and the destruction of the webs of secrecy that keep the anomalous and consensus reality separate. Both the GOC and the Serpent's Hand have clear ideals and mission statements, but the Chaos Insurgency is less forthcoming about their beliefs and convictions. Something we know for sure about the Chaos Insurgency, though, is that they view anomalies as tools to be utilized rather than unpredictable elements to be contained, studied, or neutralized. To this end, they do whatever it takes to obtain more anomalies of their own. Whether it's ruthlessly seeking out anomalies in the wild, or taking them from the Foundation with coordinated strikes during moments of weakness. Though they lack the support and resources of organizations like the Foundation and the GOC, the Chaos Insurgency more than makes up for it in devotion to their cause, their unpredictability, and most of all, their willingness to use violence. It's difficult to separate the facts from the rumors when it comes to the Chaos Insurgency. Some believe that, to compensate for their rejection by the United Nations as an official group dealing with anomalous incidents, they instead receive support from certain dictatorships in the developing world. 
Funded by the blood money of various warlords, they carry out their research on political prisoners and captured refugees provided by their murderous allies. They're also believed to illegally deal both weapons and intelligence, helping the dictators who fund them remain in power and subjugate their own people. The Foundation has been able to gather some intel about the Chaos Insurgency's organizational structure, which looks like a strange mirror of their own. It's led by the mysterious Delta Command, headed by a figure known only as the Engineer. Gamma-class personnel execute the orders of Delta Command using the lesser Beta-class personnel as field operators. And finally, there is Alpha-class. They're typically forced into conscription from the states occupied by the insurgency and serve as cannon fodder for the group as they track down as many anomalies as they can. And the insurgency is believed to possess a number of powerful anomalies already. These include the Bell of Entropy, an object that can cause a variety of destructive effects depending on where it is struck, and the Staff of Hermes, an anomalous object capable of warping the physical and chemical properties of any matter it touches. The Chaos Insurgency is only growing more powerful as they continue their pursuit of money and power with a legion of militarized anomalies. Their goal? Total world domination. Other accounts are a little more charitable to the beliefs and causes of the Chaos Insurgency. They've been described as a rebellion against the ruthless early days of the SCP Foundation, when they had a more violent, take-no-prisoners attitude. This rumor has likely been disseminated by the Chaos Insurgency themselves, though, as it paints them in the most positive and righteous light. In reality, the truth, as is often the case, is somewhere in the middle. Danger often comes from within, and the Chaos Insurgency is no exception. One constant in all interpretations of the origin of the Chaos Insurgency is that its members are rogue elements of the SCP Foundation, and it's commonly believed that they have countless moles still deep in the organization today. However, one well-kept secret among the upper echelons of the Foundation is that the creation of the Chaos Insurgency is a lot less unknown than they'd like you to think. Yes, danger really does often come from within. When researching the origins of the Chaos Insurgency, you'll likely see two dates pop up again and again, 1924 and 1948. According to the official line from the SCP Foundation, 1924 was the date of the Chaos Insurgency's defection, and 1948 marked the first series of violent raids that the Chaos Insurgency led against the Foundation. But these are only half-truths. While both dates are indeed significant in the story of the Chaos Insurgency, it's for entirely different reasons. 1924 was the date when the Chaos Insurgency, known at the time simply as the Insurgency, was created by the O5 Council. Why would the SCP Foundation's commanding authority knowingly create one of the Foundation's enemies? Well, you have to understand that at the time, the Insurgency served a very different purpose. They were intended to be a black ops group for the O5 Council, capable of doing their dirty work off the books and out of sight of the rest of the Foundation, especially its Ethics Committee, which is often in conflict with O5 Command. Their members were recruited from Mobile Task Force Alpha-1, also known as the Red Right Hand, a highly secretive MTF in the pocket of the O5. For 24 years, they did the O5's dirty work while shielding the Foundation's international reputation from any potential fallout. They were faithful soldiers, until they found themselves a new master. The Engine, a mysterious anomalous object that began to invade and infect the minds of the insurgency. The group's human leader, the previously mentioned Engineer, is merely a puppet of the Engine, its human mouthpiece. While the full extent of the Engine's plans remains mysterious to even members of the Chaos Insurgency, the Engine has been passing down orders ever since. In 1948, the Insurgency fully defected, becoming the Chaos Insurgency, and they've been a problem for the SCP Foundation ever since. From raids, to assassinations, to threats of damaging the illusion of consensus reality with their reckless behavior. And now, thanks to their acquisition of SCP-939, they could get started on Amnestics production too. Thankfully for the Foundation, they had prepared for 939's getting out into the world and all of the creatures housed at Area 12 had been implanted with subdermal trackers. Several mobile task forces were immediately dispatched to home in on the signal, take out the insurgents, and secure the 939s once more. 
They tracked the signal to a warehouse in the Badlands of New Mexico, where task force members stormed in and began a tense firefight with the Chaos Insurgents, all Gamma and Beta class, of course. The Delta classes, just like O5s, are notoriously slippery. They emerge like tactical ghosts from behind boxes and exposed pipes, advancing and firing with no regard for their own lives and safety. Slaves to the engine. It wasn't like battling your run-of-the-mill cultists. These were highly organized and dangerous combatants, with training right out of the Foundation's mobile task force playbook. Several Foundation soldiers were lost in the crossfire, but ultimately, they won the day, subduing the Chaos Insurgency forces and capturing the stolen 939s once more. Several of the insurgents that had been fatally wounded in battle were found to be Area 12 personnel, double agents for the insurgency. Many of them died with smiles on their faces, knowing they were defying the Foundation to their last breath. There was no way of knowing just how many of these secretive Chaos Insurgents were undercover, deep in the fabric of the Foundation's global apparatus. A nearby Insurgent, slowly dying from several gunshot wounds, gave a wheezy laugh. As the task force operators approached, he ranted that the Foundation's obsession with order, lies, and secrecy is the real disease that chaos and entropy is the fate of all things, and that to use the anomalies they find for their own gain is simply common sense. In the world the chaos insurgency would someday create, human beings would be the true masters of the universe, not just the perpetrators of the twisted lie we call normality. He succumbed to his injuries shortly after, and the task forces refocused their efforts on getting the 939 safely back to Area 12. What these Chaos Insurgency troops really believed is an open question. After all, the power that dictates them, the anomalous engine, is a consciousness beyond humanity. Even the engineer doesn't know the true scope of their master's grand plan. If the rest of us are lucky, and the Chaos Insurgency never reaches their mysterious goals, then neither will we. Check out SCP-5000-Y and SCP-3000 Anatashisha to broaden your knowledge of the mysterious world of the SCP Foundation.